In this video, we're going to look at the path of the cue ball using every different type of spin. To start with, let's have a look at the path of the cue ball when we play a stun shot. I'm going to play all of the shots in this demonstration fairly firmly so I can create lots of spin for each example. So from this sort of distance, we need to hit just below the center so that there's no spin on the cue ball when it strikes the object ball. As we've discussed in other videos, with no spin, the cue ball follows along the tangent line and then bounces out the cushions at roughly the same angle as it goes in. So first off, we have center ball striking or a plain ball shot. Now, you may not think of this as a spin shot, but we're actually imparting a small amount of forward spin on the ball when we strike in the middle. And as you can see, the path is substantially different from the path with the stun shot. The cue ball is pushed into the rail a little sooner, which gives a slightly narrower angle out of the cushion, bringing us higher up the table. So what about when we use full topspin? You might expect the cue ball to make contact further forward along the cushion. However, because the object ball is so close to the cushion and we're hitting the ball firmly, the top spin on the cushion doesn't have enough time to fully take hold, so we only make contact a little further forward than the tangent line. The spin is still pushing the ball in this direction though, which causes it to arc after it bounces off the cushion. If we play with top and right, then the right hand side widens the angle as the ball hits the first cushion. The top spin is still in this direction, which straightens the ball up slightly, but the right hand side is in this direction, so it weakens the effect of the top spin. However, when we play with top and left, not only does the left hand side straighten the angle out of the cushion, but the top spin and the left hand side work together to create a really strong arc to the ball's path. It also shortens the distance that the ball travels as they're working against the direction of travel after the second cushion, which slows the ball to a stop much quicker. So what about when we hit at the bottom of the ball, so screw back? The ball is drawn back from the tangent line a little, but again, it doesn't really have time to kick in too much before it hits the cushion. The slightly wider angle and the fact that the spin is pulling in this direction help to pull the ball into the side rail further down the table than it does with the stun shot. If we strike the cue ball to the bottom right, it doesn't make much difference to the initial contact on the first cushion because it's already quite a wide angle. However, there's still a little side left on the next cushion to widen that angle slightly. It's worth noticing here that we end up in a very similar position as we did when we used just topspin, but we got there in a very different way something that can be quite useful if we know that one particular route is blocked. When we strike the cue ball bottom left, then the left hand side checks the angle out of the first cushion and it brings it out at a much straighter angle. The backspin is then in a similar direction, which helps the ball to travel further down the table. Here we have an almost identical position as when we were using top right, which considering we're hitting on the exact opposite side of the ball is quite interesting. If we look at just left hand side on its own, then the side spin is much stronger and it completely straightens the ball up as it leaves the first cushion. With just right hand side, the effect is not so strong as the angle is already quite wide and it only really widens on the second bounce a little. It's also worth just pointing out here that whenever I'm using side on any of these shots, I'm adjusting my aim slightly because of the deflection this causes on the cue ball. I cover this in more detail in the link above. Now, as we've just seen, when the object ball is close to the cushion, any forward or backward spin doesn't really have time to affect the cue ball before it reaches the cushion. If we move this whole shot away from the cushion, but keep the same angle between the white and the red, then the outcome of each type of spin will be quite different. This is because we can affect the ball's path before it reaches the cushion. So again, I'll play this first shot just with stun so we can see the path along the tangent line with no spin. Just as before, playing the shot plain ball pushes the cue ball forward a little from the tangent line and gives us a narrower angle out of the first cushion. 
This time, when we play with full topspin, the spin has time to change the path of the ball before it hits the cushion. As we've looked at in other videos, the white ball is slightly smaller than the object ball. So because we're hitting this shot firmly, it will actually come back from the tangent line a little and then arc forward and bring us further up the cushion. Unlike before, where there was still lots of topspin to pull the ball across after the cushion, this time, most of the spin has been used up before the bounce. When we strike the ball to the top right, this makes very little difference to the path before the bounce. We have a little less top spin than before, so we make contact between the tangent line and full top spin. The right hand side then widens the angle a bit further, but it doesn't have a huge effect as the angle is already fairly wide. If we strike to the top left of the ball, then again there's very little difference to the path before reaching the cushion. However, this time because the side spin is working against the angle, it checks the cue ball and straightens it up as it leaves the cushion. With full screw back, we can alter the path so much that the cue ball doesn't even reach the bottom cushion, and it's drawn back across the table to the side cushion. When we strike the cue ball to the bottom right, again the side doesn't make much difference before we reach the cushion. However, because we're now approaching the side cushion fairly straight, the side has quite a pronounced effect, widening the angle up the table. When we strike to the bottom left, again we come into the cushion fairly straight, but this time the side spin actually brings us back down the table. With just left hand side, we get a path into the bottom cushion similar to that of the plain ball shot, just ahead of the tangent line. The left hand side then narrows the angle a bit and brings us higher up the table. Finally, with just right hand side, we again come into the same point on the cushion, but then the right hand side widens out the angle. As we've seen with both of these shots, we have a huge range of options using the different spins. Not only with the final position, but how we get there. These demonstrations just show the extremes as well, so obviously we have countless options anywhere in between. Hopefully these visualisations have given you an understanding of how the cue ball behaves and will help you to work out the path of the cue ball with any type of spin. If you want to see more practice routines and pull tutorials then please remember to subscribe and if you're interested in any of the equipment I use in this video then there are links in the description below.